Hello everyone. Today on Adventures with Paul we have a uh, new toy to play with. I've uh, completed the construction of my 3D printer. Um, we can't quite run it up yet. I ran into a little bit of trouble with the um, x-axis drive pulley. It uh, is made of plastic and wound up getting cracked. So the uh, belt doesn't have anything to drive it at the moment. But there's the x-axis. There's the uh, extruder. There's a motor here to drive it. And the uh, business end. Uh, it has a heated bed. Um, I have a kilogram of three millimeter filament to run with when I get started. This unit came with a um, standalone uh, controller here. You uh, load your um, G-code file onto a SD card and plug it in. And the software running in the Arduino Mega back here um, reads the G-code off the card. You can use the little knob to dial which one you want to use. It'll give you a menu. You press the button to select. Um, this is a Mendel Max version 1.5. It has a couple of improvements. I mentioned the heated bed and the standalone controller. Uh, the standard uh, Mendel Max came with the uh, Z-axis motors located up here. This is an improvement where they've relocated the two Z-axis motors on the bottom. Um, the one that's that's actually an upgrade as well, having a standard uh, power cable connection. Usually you just wire straight into the power supply, which is hiding back there. Um, let's see. The slides for the Y-axis are one of the items that can usually be upgraded. I think this is a standard Mendel Max uh, Y-axis slide. Some of them have upgraded to uh, linear slide bearings rather than uh, smooth rods like this has. Um, the construction of the frame took the better part of a day. Um, the wiring and whatnot took another day. Uh, this is one of the uh, end stops. When you uh, reach the end of travel, there's a little micro switch. You can hear it clicking there. Um, I have, uh, I replaced the standard header with Molex connectors and I have the crimp tool to crimp these ends on. It was more an exercise in cable management than anything else, getting all the uh, cabling run and routed in some manner of decent way. Another update was, uh, or an upgrade was uh, cooling fans on the uh, stepper motors. The motors that you use the most are the Y and the X motor and the extruder motor, and those all have uh, fans on them. The Z motors don't move so much, so those don't have cooling fans, don't really need them. Um, they added, I don't know if we can see it here, but there's an LED strip, two of them. Um, they're, in the instructions said to put them here, but I figure I'm going to be sitting in front of this thing, and if the lights were there, they'd kind of be shining in my eyes. So I put them on the inside of the uh, extruded rails here and here. So they shine across each other to illuminate the uh, bed down here. Um, originally, the uh, the vertices here were looking like these here. So it ran from here to here. And this type of vertice is an improvement, in theory, but the problem I had, um, this kit came from uh, 3D Printer Tech, and their video instructions, they have videos online showing you exactly how to put it together. The problem is the videos don't show the upgrades they did. So things like this vertice here 
they were showing the construction using the other one and it kind of went this way. And when I tried to do that, the parts didn't match up and I thought I had a problem like they sent me their mirror image and I, there's like two lefts and one right and I thought I had two rights and one left. It took me a minute to figure that one out. I actually fired off an email to them on that one and figured it out myself before uh, they got back with me. Um, I did email them about that. They're shipping me a replacement. Um, I got a little impatient and ordered a um, aluminum, uh, it's a 20 tooth uh, GT2 uh, sprocket or pulley. Um, let's see, that's uh, eight millimeter threaded rod for the z-axis. This did not come, some of them have like Acme threaded rod. Um, from what I've read, it's not really that necessary to get an Acme threaded rod for the z-axis. Um, it's got uh, aluminum uh, couplers. Uh, quite often they have uh, printed couplers to hook the motor up to the threaded rod. Um, it's got IBEC uh, pillow bearings for all the slide rods for all three axes. Um, let's see. Uh, they, they send little clips. They're black on black, but right there is a little clip to hold the wires in place. And they're handy. They are unobtrusive. I used a minimum of zip ties here to hold things. Uh, they sent one piece of this. This is used um, in automotive uh, wiring, like instrument panels and things like that, quite often. So I went and grabbed some more from some, for, from some scrap harnesses, so for cable management. Uh, it makes things a lot neater um, out where you can see it. The, the big mess of extra wire is uh, tucked back in here. The uh, stepper motors came with connectors uh, crimped on the end already, which was uh, made things convenient. It's just the lengths, they were all the same. It's like from the factory standard lengths. So I got some extra wire. So I'm just tucking that back in there. They recommended putting it between the power supply and the, uh, the plate. Uh, one thing I can say about this company is it appears that they hand drilled the uh, acrylic plate for mounting the power supply and circuit card. And there's two aluminum plates down here to mount uh, the bed on the y-axis. And it didn't hurt anything, it just didn't look as professional as I would have liked. Oh, there's another one of the uh, bearings, or pulleys, right there. Uh, looks exactly like the one that broke. Um, I bought more than one, so I'll be replacing that with an aluminum pulley as well. Um, let's see. They actually sent me a red, a white, and a green, no, a black, a white, and a green wire to use for the AC. I just grabbed a power cord. I only needed like a six inch length of it to get up here. It comes straight from the, uh, the back side of the power outlet and switch back in there. Um, there's the Y axis uh, end stop right there. It's a mechanical end stop. Um, and again, I used my Molex crimper to put nice ends on it, and these all got cut to length. Um, there's two thermistors to measure temperature. That one there measures the bed temperature. And there's another one that goes into the side of the hot end right there that little tiny wire going into a hole in the side. There's a glass bead thermistor in there. Um, those I cut to length as well. Uh, the thermistors come in to connectors, those red and black wires right there, which may be a little hard to see on this. But there's two of them. There's a provision for a third. There's a provision for a lot of stuff on this. This is a Ramps 1.4 board. They have a provision to add a second extruder right there. There's an open connector. There's a provision to add four servos and then there's two auxiliary ports as well. This whole connection here is the connection off to the uh, front panel controller here. So that's using the auxiliary ports on the end. Um, 
There's a couple of voltage output ports as well. There's a, I noticed, a um, I2C port with power and ground, a four pin connector there. The end stops come in right in here. And I only have end stops at like the negative end of the axes. There's a provision to put end stops on the other end as well. They actually gave me wiring to do that. I had quite a bit of uh, wiring harness left over um, for motors and whatnot. They wanted splicing uh, done for on the motor wiring. I just used it as is. They sent me zip ties and shrink tubing, which I have my own. Um, they sent a nice little organizer, and I was able to keep track of everything I was going with. A um, whole bunch of 3 millimeter parts, nuts, bolts, uh, washers, uh, 5 millimeter for most of the frame. Um, they gave me the third thermistor, actually. There's the harness for it, and that is what the thermistor actually looks like. It's got some uh, little insulation, insulated tubing to run up to it, and then a little glass bead. Focus. I don't know if I can focus on that or not. There it is. Two little copper wires go into a black glass bead. The uh, I think PTFE or something like that insulation slid onto the copper, and then I solder that to the end of one of these harnesses, and it actually says. Where'd it go? Therm for thermistor. So I got, the, the, I have the thermistor, I just don't have anything to uh, measure the temperature of. That would be for like the second extruder if we went that way. I am not going to be adding another extruder on this. I don't see a need for it. Um, let's see. The only real issue aside from the broken pulley, um, this is the extruder right here. Um, that screw there is actually a hexagonal hole that you'd put a nut in. Um, I don't think I can get it to a position where we can see it very well, but on the bottom, right in here, is another hexagonal hole. So the instructions have you put a nut on the bottom and a nut on the top and then run a screw through this nut, through that piece of plastic, through that piece of plastic, through that piece of plastic, and into the nut on the top. Well, if you catch the threads on the bottom nut and the top nut, the distance between the nut is not going to change. The two nuts is not going to change, so you can't tighten anything. So this whole assembly was a little wobbly. So I put a nut on the bottom and put a washer on the top and ran that's a number, no, a four millimeter uh, screw straight down through. So there's supposed to be a nut on this end. I put the screw head on this end. To get the screw head on the other end, it's underneath the motor right in there. So the motor I had to install after I had the extruder bolted on. Um, once I did that, originally I had the extruder uh, motor bolted on before I put the thing on. When I took the motor off, getting to the other screw was real easy. Um, I could have put the screw head on the bottom, it's just with these pillow bo bo blocks here, it was uh, obstructing um, my access to it. So I went with that, and it was working fine. Um, well, it's looking fine. 